we have two great panelists. And uh, my name is Ezra Roizen. I work with uh, Vader. I also work with an advisory firm uh, in the Bay Area working with uh, emerging companies. Uh, Vader, it's all about getting down into it and trying to learn stuff and get a chance to meet all these entrepreneurs and get some insight from them. And, uh, and in particular, marketplaces is a very hot area in commerce generally. How many people here in things you're working on right now are relevant to marketplaces and commerce? I'm guessing a pretty good number, yeah. So I think it's going to be great to sort of hear from these, these two gentlemen and hear what they're, what they're working on. So uh, Kyle from Home Hero and Merlin from Sue, I'd love to hear, start here, just uh, real high level uh, about the company, a little intro on you, and, and then we can go down and we'll get into some questions. Great. Hey guys, uh, my name is Kyle Hill. I'm the founder and CEO of Home Hero. I'm super excited to be here today. Uh, a little bit about a home hero. We are the fastest and most affordable way for families to find non-medical in-home senior care. So uh, we uh, vet trusted caregivers and refer them to families in their homes. And uh, we started this company back in 2013. Uh, I was observing a lot of the problems my family was having uh, finding caregivers for my 98-year-old grandmother and uh, never thought that I'd be in the senior care space, but um, it was a really devastating process that my family went through and I really dedicated my life to making it better. Uh, we're a 30-person team. We're uh, located right here in Santa Monica. Uh, we service four different cities and we have 1,500 caregivers uh, across California and we've provided a million hours of home care over the last two years. Hey everybody, I'm Merlin Kaufman. I'm the uh, CEO of Soothe, Massage Delivered to You. Um, similar to Kyle, I had a problem trying to find a massage therapist when I travel. And uh, so I created a system that allowed massage therapists who are not particularly great business people traditionally to uh, make it easier to earn income and get more work and make it easier for clients to find these high quality providers with a two-way feedback system. Uh, we launched about two years ago, 2013. And uh, about 13 months ago, we were only in one city, and now we're in about 16 cities, and we have over 1,800 providers. Cool. So let's dig in. So in marketplaces, you have demand side and you have supply side, and obviously chicken and egg, flywheel, whatever you want to call it, getting those two things together at the same time and getting them in a way that you can actually uh, get sort of commercial velocity going is invariably the hardest part, particularly at the beginning. So maybe start. Uh, I'd love to hear about Home Hero. Uh, some of the dynamics on the supply side that caused them to want to use your platform and some of the dynamics on the demand side that caused them to want to use your platform and, and how has that sort of changed since founding the company a couple of years ago? Or, or what have you learned? Yeah, well, l let me start by saying we, we went the first six months of our company and didn't even build any product. We spent six months just learning. And I came into this industry, I didn't know a lot about the home care space, and that was actually a good thing because I was like a sponge and I had to soak up information. And so literally for the first six months, we were uh, incubated out of science, um, who will tell you that building marketplaces are very expensive because they take a long, a long time to build. You have to build trust, you really have to understand the problem, and you have a two-sided marketplace, so you really have to win over both sides. So they take a long time to build. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do this without science. Uh, but what we did do really, really well over those first six months when we were just learning is we went to caregiver meetup groups, we went to hospitals, we went to skilled nursing facilities, and we just soaked up as much information as we could. And in order to build a, a really trusted, vetted uh, force of caregivers, we went through the onboarding process of every single marketplace company that we could get our hands on. So as of right now, I'm, a, I'm an Uber driver, I'm a Lyft driver, I'm a courier for Postmates, I'm a ninja on Washio, I'm a task <laughs> rabbit. I, I went through every single onboarding process just to learn how they worked. And then at the end, we were able to curate a, a, an onboarding process of our own uh, that, was, that was specific to home care. And that really kicked us off so we could really find and vet uh, caregivers, and not just good caregivers, but caregivers that really wanted to be there. One thing that Dog Vacay learned, they're a, dog, um, a marketplace for dog boarders, is the really, really good dog boarders weren't actually the ones that succeeded on their platform because they had all these preconceived notions about what it meant to be a dog boarder. Uh, and so finding good quality supply is, is half the battle. Finding ones that really want to interact with you and your platform is, is the second half of the problem. Yeah, so with massage therapists, we took a different approach. You guys did a lot of research. We kind of just jumped right into it. Um, from the time that I came up with the concept in May of 2013 until August of 2013, we did our first massage, which was a three-month period of time. And uh, I kind of just went out there, and I went to all these massage schools, and I, I worked with massage therapists themselves, and I was like, hey, like, how much would you go out and do a massage for? 
Um, it was a very hands-on approach. Um, kind of just went with it and ran. Literally. Literally. <laughs> So uh, that's great. No, that's, that's super helpful. In terms of the, uh, right now where the business is, in terms of bottlenecks, do you find that the bottleneck is getting great supply, either in terms of caregivers or massage therapists, or is the bottleneck getting more demand? Where, as you see it today and as you see it growing, um, where do you feel like, in, in terms of the marketplace, you'll find the, the biggest challenges into scaling up? Yeah, I think the biggest challenges are finding the best quality supply. Because demand is typically there for a large market segment like home care or like massage therapy. Massage is like a $14 billion market in the, in the United States. Um, finding the high quality supply is what really gives you the repeat usage, which is the success factor in all these marketplace businesses. Same. Um, I, where's the bottleneck? I, I would say that there are a lot of really, really good caregivers out there, but I think really what our value is, is differentiating the really good caregivers from, uh, from the inexperienced ones. And so we use a lot of factors. We have a very complex matching algorithm that we use um, where this isn't just a, like Uber and Postmates and Lyft, it's all about distance, right? Like, okay, you have to have over 4.8 stars and you have to be close to the driver and you'll get referred to that driver. It doesn't work like that for us. We could have clients that they're, they're, they have Alzheimer's, they're dementia, they're a 250 pound male, uh, they have very specific needs with trait care or uh, diabetes, and so you need somebody with that skill match. And so we really do have to match them with the right caregiver or it's not gonna, we're not gonna have a high retention rate. So we spent a lot of time understanding what those variables are and really and, and, and honing in on what makes a good long-term match. And so having good caregivers for us it was very, very important, and that's what we spent most of the beginning years of our life doing. But now the focus is on really that matching algorithm and how we connect people uh, with what they're looking for. And there's all these little nuances, some of them I just mentioned, things like pets and, um, and, and if there's a vegetarian client and do they cook meat or not. There's just a lot of, of really minute details that go into the matching process that we have to account for. And, and following that, because I think you, you sort of tipped into it a little bit, uh, brand. How do you sort of set your brand identity, control the people who are out there in this marketplace, coming through a service that's, that's kind of their brand, kind of your brand a bit? In, in, in what way do you sort of set the parameters of where your brand experience starts and ends and with the consumer to have an expectation that you know, these aren't my employees. I can't exactly tell them what to do. They're people that were getting through a service, but there's still a service expectation. And obviously Uber struggles with that. Airbnb has their own way. Lots of these services have that challenge. I'd love to hear both of you sort of what's the parameters of your brand experience and how that relates to sort of the expectation you set with the consumer? Yeah, so I think, I think a lot of that has to do with the UX, UI you create in terms of your mobile app, as well as your onboarding process and how um, stringent your requirements are for the providers on your system. Because once they're on, you can't tell them how to do anything. It's their, they do their job as they do it, right? That's the professionals in this field. Um, and so with that being said, we have to pick the best hirers or recruiters of these providers and that's, that's a very key element to the business in any marketplace, I think, is figuring out who, who's the right person to pick the providers for your system. Yeah, it, similarly for us, it, it really comes down to trust. Uh, we, we have to build trust in the marketplace with, with the clients and the caregivers. Um, you know, we build these beautiful online profiles for the caregivers. We actually do video interviews with all uh, 1,500 caregivers we have on the platform. And, you know, to be frank, this, this really eliminates a lot of the... Um, racial or religious biases that people have toward individuals, and we don't waste people's time sending someone in, and they get sent back for reasons uh, that they don't want to admit. And so with this video, we create a lot of transparency about who this individual is that they're sending into your home. And with that, you, you just you save a lot of time. You don't have to go through the interview process for these caregivers. We'll just say, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna block off four hours on a Saturday to interview all these caregivers. They all come in and, and you interview one by one and you pick one. That takes a long time, especially if you're far away. So in terms of your, the, the brand, uh, these caregivers are very proud to be on the Home Hero platform because before, as life as a caregiver, they're throwing their resume out on Craigslist trying to get jobs. Now they have this vetted brand behind them that said, this person's background checked me, they've checked my references, I've worked you know, three or 400 hours on the Home Hero platform, I'm five star rated, I have a CNA certification. And so they really use us to leverage getting jobs and getting other people onto the platform. So it's a very symbiotic relationship. Okay, that's great. And so following on that, uh, one of the things I love about Airbnb is you, you as the provider, the supplier, 
They give you a million dollars worth of insurance. They manage the transaction. They don't charge an exorbitant rate. So it's a really nice uh, experience. And in fact, I would direct people back into Airbnb, even if they came around Airbnb, just because I'd prefer to have the insurance. And it's worth it. Like, it's so much value that I'm getting that I'd rather have them in there versus out. Um, what are the things, A, that you do, I'd love to hear both, beyond just the transactional aspect to sort of create that full experience? Um, and B, how do you keep people from a, going to one of your caregivers around you and not paying you or going to get that massage therapist 10 more times and not paying you? Maybe, I'm sure there's a certain loss there, but both, what do you do to create a great experience and what do you do to keep people using your platform? Well, every marketplace deals with this backdooring issue and it's very different depending on your industry. Um, and I can only speak to, to caregiving. I can tell you that it's unusual to backdoor in, in caregiving for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, these are what I call career caregivers. They're not like Lyft drivers where they're actors and bartenders that are trying to make money on the side. This is their primary occupation. And so if they get kicked off the Home Hero platform, they're really screwed. And the other side is, by the way, they're dealing with 98-year-olds in their home with stage three cancer. They know that the, the timeline, the lifetime value of their clients is much lower than, say, a babysitter or, or even, or even a, maybe a, a massage therapist where they could build many long-year relationships. Our clients go in and out of, of hospitals and skilled nursing facilities and hospice, and sometimes they need care and sometimes they don't. They'll fall, they'll break their hip, they need a caregiver, they get better, they don't need the caregiver. There's just a lot of volatility in, in their job. So, these caregivers, a lot of them, they know they need us uh, for their next job. They're always looking ahead. There's a lot of instability there, and that's why we are able to retain such a high amount of the caregivers. The other side of it is just the technology that we provide to them. We have GPS location when they are in and out of the home. We have the insurance policies. Uh, the, the family can see photos and videos of their loved one in the home. And we, we charge a 15 to 20% margin on all the payments that go through our system, and that's more than enough uh, to to, to pay for the uh, the services they're providing. So. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, so disintermediation is always an issue in these marketplaces. Um, but in terms of massage, it's very challenging as a massage therapist to schedule appointments while you're doing a massage. So it particularly caters towards us not being disintermediated in that regard. Um, but other, aside from that, I mean, imagine you're out on your own in the field as a massage therapist, you're a female, and you're entering a male client's home. You may not feel particularly safe without backup, but Soothe provides 24-hour care in terms of customer service, concierge team. You know there's always somebody out there who you can text or call if there's any kind of issue. And that's, that's a huge point of, you know, it's a huge value prop for the supply side. Um, for the demand side, they're like, you know, who does this person come from? Like you said, it's the brand behind it that reinforces the provider and uh, really allows them to say, look, I'm a part of this vetted system and I, I am reliable and I am, I'm not going to steal anything or you know, do anything funky. Cool. How much time do I have? Uh, time's up? That's it? All right, so uh, one last question. Um, <laughs> mobile, that's how I roll, hold on. So mobile, how has mobile, because it seems like all these marketplaces, um, or many of them, are really not just internet, but are, are, are moving mobile as such a key driver. I, I think it'd be really interesting for everybody here to hear about how mobile it does or doesn't impact, maybe differently for the two business models, but I'd love to hear how mobile has an impact. You don't care about mobile, right? Oh, yeah. not at all. Yeah. No, not at all. No, I'd say, so it's funny, we didn't even have a mobile app for the first nine months of the business. Wow. And then uh, we launched the mobile app July of 2014, and within three months, it was 70% of our bookings. Wow. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, the most important way that we use mobile is, is really being at, giving the family information that the, that the caregiver actually showed up. That's the scariest thing as a, as, as a family member to know that nobody's at your mother or father's home when they're supposed to be. So uh, we have a GPS location and say, yes, they're actually there. And when they clock out, we can actually show them where they were when they clocked out. You know, were they halfway down the freeway? Were they actually in the home? Um, and so that just cut out a, a, a lot of uh, the trust issues around that. Um, and then also, you know, these things we talk about, the, the real-time connectivity with your care. Uh, you know, the, the, families, um, the families can receive on, in real time just photos and videos and audio of what actually happened in the home that day uh, and so it, it, it really uh, lowers a lot of the stress levels for for the uh, sons and daughters awesome all right well look uh, thank you guys that was a great panel I think you guys got hopefully got a lot out of it and uh, you got some bread and butter wine uh, and uh, I think there's another thing coming up or and hoodies all good living hoodies any other gifts and prizes knives okay I'm back. all right uh, thanks everybody thank you guys thanks